Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? The Last Stand Union City is truly the Flash game of all time. Releasing all the way back in 2011, and as the third installment in the Last Stand series, Union City was a game I completely missed, but it's one that, at least for most of you, shaped PC gaming. I talked about this in another video, but I spent most of my time playing The Last Stand and The Last Stand 2, somehow evading all spoilers of this masterpiece for the last 12 years. That's why today, I wanted to sit down and experience this side-scrolling RPG flash game and give my thoughts on it. I chose the hard difficulty which requires you to eat and sleep. For character creation, you can make your own custom setup, but I went with one of the defaults because it sounded cool and I'm simple-minded. Meet Hugh Janus, he'll be the hero of our story today. He's on his way back to Union City amidst the panic and chaos in search of his wife. Unfortunately, he went to the Caitlyn Jenner School of Driving, taking out some poor pedestrian asking for spare change. Once on your feet, you can start looting the area before encountering your first zombies. The game itself is pretty easy, and it's loaded with that old school, early 2000s browser RPG energy. You know the vibe, it's got those bold numbered damage indicators along with these simple animations, and I love it. Anyway, shortly after leaving the highway, I stumbled into my first safe house. Inside, you'll find a few survivors who love to lure dump to complete strangers. Going into the hallway gives you access to your storage chest, and inside of that, you'll find a ton of premium gear. It's worth noting that everyone has access to this since the gear became free in 2016. This means if you buy the Legacy game on Steam, you'll spawn in with access to all of the clothing here, such as bulletproof vests, hurt combat clothing, and the Jack outfit from the first two games. Heading upstairs, I found a couple hanging out in the bedroom. While they weren't reenacting a famous Kim K tape from the time, Sarah was more than happy to blurt out that her husband's a baby back bitch who would rather hide in the closet harder than R. Kelly than step outside right now. One of my favorite components of Union City is these randomly triggered hordes. You'll know this is happening because the music will change to a more upbeat, dramatic tone right before the start. Leveling up in this game works like most other RPGs of the time. You have some core skills on the left hand side such as strength, endurance, precision, intellect, and luck. These will boost several survivor skills by one point. With that, you'll also earn 10 points with each level, to split between all of your survivor skills. Since this playthrough, I've learned that your best bet is to spam luck and searching early on. That being said, I'm an idiot, and it's hard to pass up on seeing bigger damage numbers, so I started dumping points into things like pistols, using the remaining points on searching and smarts. The houses and explorable buildings in this game are all really well done. Each one feels unique and has its own layout and style. It's one of those moments where you can tell just how much love and care was really put into this game. Anyway, down the road, I found a man aiming a gun at me, protecting Ed Boone. Ed is literally just labeled as Guy, and he's trying to cut open a military fence to escape the neighborhood. After f***ing around with his autistic sidekick, is he able to outlast the wave of epileptic seizures he's about to go undergo? I found bolt cutters in Ed's garage and brought them back, allowing me to continue into the next zone. Sweet. We're still on a mission to find oh, our apartment, angry. so a lot of this zone is just combat and looting. after I get these guys out of here. Oh. oh, they were faking it the whole time? I need to go to my apartment. These are houses. I managed to find the apartment building pretty easily and began searching for clues. Strangely enough, there was nothing in the Harry Potter closet, but Beth was gracious enough to ruin our beautiful walls by writing on them in Sharpie like a f***ing toddler. The hospital was a gauntlet. It's completely overrun with zombies, and for the first time so far, I felt outmatched. Each room has a chance to have like 6 or 7 zombies idling in them, so you're borderline jump scared every time your compulsive need to loot takes over. No, seriously, there's a whole janitor closet that you can lockpick, only to be assaulted by zombies for successfully Yo, breaking it. we're learning. Oh, there's so many of you. It's kind of hard to put into words how many zombies are here, so I'm just going to show you some clips and hopefully you'll feel my pain. Am 
Am I gonna have to, like... Every time I want to come to the safe house, I gotta come all the way back, uh... All the way back over here. Safe. After climbing several floors and snaking through all the hallways, I found Shanice. She explains that the military began rounding up all the survivors and transporting them to the stadium, which had been transformed into a makeshift quarantine zone. To get there, we have to travel through Newtown, which is a level 9 area. Since I'm only level 7, I figured the best course of action would be to hit up a pawn shop and see what I could buy. The pawn shop is essentially just a weapons shop where you can spend your hard looted cash. You can't sell anything here, but I also never felt the need to hoard items to sell in the first place. That being said, there's some really cool weapons here, such as an Uzi, an M16, and even a medieval mace. I can't afford any of this at the moment, so I decided to make my money the honest and hardworking way, by starting an OnlyFans. Nah, in actuality, you can find a ton of cash by breaking into people's homes and taking their belongings, similar to how we all did it in San Andreas back in the day. Of course, the first place I checked was harboring the zombified family of Anne Frank, who ambushed me from the attic, forcing me to retreat back into the city. Nearby, I found an apartment complex and began going door to door, looting food and any cash I could get my hands on. One of my favorite things about this game are the little notes that survivors will leave behind for their families. I know it's pretty common in games now, but 12 years ago, these small details were what made Union City so beloved. Another small piece that I love about the game is that no weapons are hard locked to finding cash. A perfect example is right here, where I find a shotgun just from looting, and then trigger an ambush, which ends up giving me an Uzi off of a corpse. The same Uzi that can be purchased for several hundred dollars just a few doors down. After leaving the apartment complex, I wandered into a gun shop to find poor pitiful Hank Morgan sitting against the destroyed shelving. If you feel like talking to him, he'll give you a key to access one of the locked rooms at the top of the apartment, sending me right back in. Returning the rifle to Hank gives you 500 XP, and one of my favorite aspects of the game, allows Hank to become your companion. Not only will he follow you and fight alongside of you, but you can also swap weapons with him. Meaning when you go buy an M16 and give it to him, well, he'll turn into the collective of SEAL Team 6. There is one noticeable bug with him though, and that's if you sleep or change the direct city or location that you're in, he'll revert back to his trusty hunting rifle, tossing whatever you have aside. This will result in you losing the weapon you just gave him, so I'd suggest keeping him with his hunting rifle until you're about to enter a heavy combat area. At that point, give him a solid weapon and just be sure to take it back before you rest for the night. About halfway into Newtown's first street, I found a police station turned safe house. And after heading upstairs, I found Keith and Todd. Stevens, not Howard, he's busy doing space stuff. Anyway, Todd explained that one of the new officers, Richards, got panicked and ran off with all their weapons on his way to Uptown. He's also carrying the gun cage key, which is needed to access the station's armory. This is an optional side quest, but I was too enthralled with it to not hunt this guy down. Luckily, we don't need to travel all the way to another town. Heading down into the subway, you'll either find Richards or Jared, depending on the route you take. Hopefully you'll stumble into Richards, who has the key on his body. Taking that back to the safe house unlocks the armory along with an achievement and the biohazard outfit, which I'm assuming just makes you look like an Among Us character. With that, I headed back into the subway, since that's the only way to Uptown from here. This whole set piece was really cool. You have to go cart by cart until reaching the other side, which spits you out into the tunnels. The tunnels then in turn lead you to a safe house, allowing you to rest up for the night. It was only 4pm at this point, and I had pills to keep me awake, so Hank and I continued to press onward. After exiting the subway, we found ourselves in the central building, Uptown. One of my favorite aspects of this game is that each building has something waiting for you at the end, something to explore. 
Take the central building, for example. Not only are there tons of desks to loot and zombies to kill, but there's a small message that has nothing to do with the story, but walks you through the mind of a psychopath. If you're just here for the loot, well, reaching the final desk in the building has $60 waiting for you inside. What I'm trying to get at is Union City rewards you well, and often, for your efforts. Uptown has a different aesthetic than New Towns or any other areas, as you can start to feel the military presence here. There's abandoned Humvees and messages written on all the walls talking about the horrors that took place here. Next to one of these Humvees is a grenade launcher. I'm gonna save it for later on, but it was a really cool pickup to find here. Continuing on to the next area, I found a Herc base camp that was guarded by two soldiers wielding SMGs. They aren't hostile towards me, but I didn't want to risk anything yet, so I just kept it moving. While exploring some of the buildings here, I found another safe house located in the boiler room of the Harrison & Harrison shop. There's a manhole down here, but it requires a key to open, so I kept that in the back of my mind for later and rested up until morning. On the other side of the building, you can find a message talking about cult murders, cannibals, and other stories that the military had been telling civilians in the area to avoid mass panic. Clearly everything worked out perfectly. As I continued through Uptown, I found another pawn shop. This one has a katana in it, but I'll need another $200 before I can buy it. I didn't want to forget about it though, so I started going back through any buildings I missed looking for more cash. The first of those buildings happened to be a police station. This place was filled with zombies, leading to several close calls where I even contemplated abandoning Hank to save my own life. Fortunately, it never came to that, and even after being ambushed several times, we pressed further, finding an AK-47 and an M4 in a desk just out in the open. After picking the lock on another desk, I scooped a key to the armory. Inside are several M4s, a UMP-45, two shotguns, and some pistols, along with a ton of ammo. Since I already had an M4 at this point, I just grabbed the UMP and the arrow shotgun. I figured that'd be more than enough for whatever came our way, especially now that Hank is walking around with an AK. With the police station looted, I made my way back to the pawn shop where I dropped over a thousand dollars on a shiny katana so I could finally cosplay as Michonne. Now fully kitted out, Hank and I proceeded into the stadium. The only downside? Well, I forgot to swap weapons back and Hank tossed his AK aside for his trusty rifle. There's some soldiers out front that instructed us to head into the lobby where Dr. Smith was waiting for us. Checking the list behind the Among Us character reveals that Bethany, my wife, was relocated, though it doesn't say where to. After talking to some of the survivors, I met Barry, local janitor by day, Alex Jones enthusiast by night. He explained that Bethany was relocated the previous day, but that he'll help us find her, telling us to meet him in the maintenance room. Now, initially, I was concerned he was going to try to give me the old hot Cosby, but he stayed true to his word. You can pause to read this if you want to, but the TLDR here is that Herc soldiers have taken his wife and child along with Bethany, and he wants us to find out what happened. Through trial and error, I stumbled into the Herc outpost, shooting a scientist who bum-rushed Hank and me. There's a relocation order document on one of the desks explaining that they've moved the civilians to the park in Uptown. You either head back here or continue investigating the facility, so I pressed forward where I found an automatic shotgun named Thor. After returning to Barry, he'll give you a key for you to escape and wants you to meet him at the Harrison & Harrison, the safe house we stayed at the previous night. Remember that manhole I found that I couldn't access? Well, we used that to sneak into the Merc outpost.
The tents here are loaded with MREs and skill books, which are super helpful. While making my way through the camp, I noticed hundreds of body bags in the background, likely filled with the remains of the relocated survivors. Inside the next tent, I found Bethany and was able to break her out from her cage. There is an exchange that takes place here where you learn that Bethany was bitten back at the hospital, and that left me with a very dreadful mindset, knowing that we'd eventually have to put her down. I knew this was going to happen, but as soon as we got back into the sewers, we were attacked by a rogue horde of zombies. Now, don't ask how they got down here or how we missed them originally when we snuck in, just watch this sick ass combat section. In an even more depressing turn of events, Barry gives us a boat and tells us to leave while he hangs back to search for his wife and child amongst the dead. After traveling to the docks, I found another safe house with a survivor named Sean hanging out inside. He tells a brief story about a survivor named Jack who he met back in Jonestown. If you've only ever played Union City or don't remember the first two games, Jack is the main character of both, also known as the green hoodie guy with the beard. Moving a little to the left will reveal the legend himself. He recaps the events of The Last Stand 2, even mentioning that the group of survivors hanging out in the safe house with him are in fact the people you rescued from the previous game. I love callbacks like this, and to have Jack in the game as someone who's willing to help you escape is such an awesome moment for those who loved the first two games. Anyway, he sent us to the military camp to check for explosives to assist with our escape attempt. So, Hank and I headed off, leaving Bethany behind with Jack. Waterside is the most difficult area we've been to so far. It's marked as a level 20 zone, with the previous area being level 16. For reference, I just hit level 12, so if nothing else, I'm severely underleveled for this region. This mission was one of my favorites, though. The military camp is abandoned, but you're not given a definitive objective. Well, you are, but there's no one crate that contains all three items. All you're told is you need to find C4, C4 blasting caps, and a C4 timer. There's some really cool weapons to find here as well, like an M249 LMG and a custom SCAR, though I didn't have ammo for either of them, so I never get to try them out. There's even some additional crates to loot with what I can only assume are even rarer weapons, but I didn't have the skill to open them at the time. Handing the components over to Jack rewards us with an XM8 assault rifle, which looks badass. We're prompted to meet Jack at the wall where we, along with his team, began the assault on Union Island. Unfortunately, the entire team left their helmets at home and decided to just watch me get absolutely massacred as soon as we crossed the wall. The goal here is to simply keep running, completely disregarding the zombies chasing after you. After gunning down a soldier, Bethany asks the question we've all been wondering.
funny enough, you explain that he's gone only to literally waltz into him the very next area. In an act of pure selflessness, Jack and his team hold the line, allowing Hank, Bethany, and yourself to escape. It's short, and I know I missed a ton of side quests, but I can confidently say that The Last Stand Union City lives up to the hype. At the end of the day, it's a 2D side-scrolling RPG with a sub 3 hour storyline, and I loved every single moment of it. The art style is amazing, the backdrops are beautiful, and each area feels completely unique. Even the buildings you can enter are phenomenal. I said it in the last video, but The Last Stand is a series I hold very close to my heart. It's not only what sparked COD zombies to exist, but it was one of the earliest exposures to zombie games in general for me. So in a way, The Last Stand is partially the reason I even have a YouTube channel to begin with. Thank you all so much for pushing me to continue playing this. It's been an amazing blast of nostalgia, and it holds up surprisingly well all these years later. This isn't sponsored or anything, but the Legacy Collection is on sale on Steam, so I'll have that linked in the description. It usually goes on sale for like $5 for the three games, and honestly, it's worth it for Union City alone. Let me know if you'd like me to keep this going, and we can check out the next installment in the series, The Last Stand Aftermath, or if there's another game you'd like me to check out, and we can go from there. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and until next time, thanks for stopping by.